With that, I'd like to introduce the executive director of the Open Compute Foundation, Cole Crawford, and his panel. Thanks, Frank. Hey, guys. So it's, uh, it's one thing to stand on the shoulders of giants. It's quite a different thing to have to speak after them. Um, that being said, thanks again for coming on day two. Uh, I'd like to welcome up those pioneers that are really really pushing the boundaries of uh, what you can do with open compute. Being, being an early adopter is never easy, uh, but we've thought that you guys would find it valuable in hearing a little bit about these stories. So uh, if you would, please help me uh, welcome Justin Aircrans from Bloomberg, uh, Jeremy Heilbrock from Orange, and Ron Williams from Riot Games. Thanks for coming, guys. So you guys are all super early adopters of open compute, and I think I want to start off by just asking you, you know, initially, what, what led you to open compute? What, you know, you, there's, this, there's the, the, the easy legacy route of the, you know, you saw Frank's keynote and the slide yesterday about that squeezed middle uh, tier. You know, what kind of led you to the decision to say, hey, this open compute thing might be real and we want to test it out? <clears throat> well, so for, uh, for Riot, um as, as, as we continue to grow and, and pick up uh, more and more players engaging with the product, um, obviously that was driving the infrastructure scale. And we started looking um, at, at some of the really large web scale guys, whether it's Amazon or, or Google and Facebook. And, and uh, it was perfect timing. Facebook uh, started rolling out open compute and said, look, here's how we're doing uh, this huge web scale implementation. Um, and, and so we started looking at it very early and then really uh, once we come to understand what was really happening and, and, and why they were doing what they were doing, um, we started playing with it, and then we adopted pretty fast. I mean, there's, uh, uh, <clears throat> we're always looking for ways to return more value in what we're doing to the players, right? And so uh, driving down the cost and improving the energy consumption, um, huge drivers for us. Um, and so, so we grabbed it and, uh, and haven't looked back. Great. Jeremy? Being part of the uh, Orange Corporate Strategy Office in San Francisco, we are always looking at the trends that would really bring value to Orange as a global company. And um, in the past five years, Orange has been working a lot on energy efficiency for the data centers, and uh, commodity hardware also came up very quickly uh, on the agenda of IT. So whatever Facebook did was resonating very well uh, with us. Uh, and we wanted to be early to understand uh, what it was about, uh, especially because a large company like Orange usually takes its time you know, to integrate uh, that kind of disruption. So that's why we wanted to be part of it very quickly at the early stage, even if we knew that it would go to production right away. Great. Yeah, I think kind of at uh, Bloomberg, um, I think kind of what we've you know, we had uh, someone from our data center team here, you know, kind of at last year's, you know, summit and kind of came back to, you know, New York and was kind of really talking about, you know, kind of the OCP and we had heard about it, but, you know, I think, you know, we really felt, you know, now was really kind of the time where we could kind of have all of the supply chain and kind of enough of the kind of the designs in place where, okay, let's kind of take that jump and let's start kind of procuring kind of the OCP equipment. And, you know, from our perspective, the best way for us to get feedback is, you know, get um, eyes on it, you know, really get the feedback and, and get a physical thing rather than, hey, let's look at the specifications, let's go get some equipment and give feedback to the community. Wow. So, um, so it, was, it was interesting for me to hear uh, Mark talking about, um, Mark Andreessen talking about Facebook and, you know, in the 90s and how much more CapEx investment that, that Facebook would have to make if they started the, that company, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Riot Games has, uh, has deployed a, a very large game responsible for, I think I've seen metrics upwards of 3% of all internet traffic daily, um, <laughs> which is quite a lot of internet traffic. Uh, how, how do you weigh sort of the CapEx investment versus the, you know, the ability to sort of work backwards and, and work from the, the workload that's specific to uh, your company? You know, what, what, what kind of, how, how did you manage that balance? So, uh, so for us, it was really, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think Microsoft had a pretty cool slide up yesterday, talking about it as you move from uh, 100 to 1,000 to maybe 10,000 plus servers. Uh, here's some of the considerations you have to worry about and maintainability and 
return to service and and, uh, and, and the workload in the data center uh, piece. And, uh, and uh, Open Compute has really helped tackle some of those uh, in, in its designs. A lot of cool stuff happening uh, even this year at the show uh, to make that easier. And so um, our, our biggest concern actually for Open Compute was just uh, the risk of, we actually run Windows on it, um, and, uh, and it's not a certified kind of Windows platform, uh, uh, at least the, you know, the windmill kind of server that, that we're using today. And so uh, uh, once we got through and, and felt like we kind of self-certify uh, what we were doing, um, it, it was pretty simple math. Uh, you know, uh, 30, 40 percent, maybe 50 percent less power depending on using it, and then the capex cost was, was uh, significantly cheaper, even though we're buying pretty good volume discounts from our from our kind of branded suppliers. Um, uh, and so, uh, <clears throat> the, the integrators in the middle, pretty awesome too, because that let us shift to really uh, easily coming out of the exact rack config we want instead of our guys doing all that work. Uh, so that saved a ton of time. Um, it, it was it was pretty straightforward. Uh, that for us. Great, you know, and, and that's one of the uh, one of the benefits of of the solution provider network inside of Open Compute is you've got you've got some companies that are are really good at you know custom L10 solutions, and you have other companies that are great at on-site services. So there's a there's a wide range of being able to to um, you know consume OCP from a solution provider or go direct to uh, you know some of the some of the big ODMs. Um, Jeremy, what is what does Orange think about you know the way you can the way you can adopt OCP? Uh, our, our main goal f um, is really to um, let's optimize some of our cloud services today. That's the, um, the target. Uh, it could be uh, it could have a bigger impact at Orange uh, uh, in the enterprise market, but I think it's too early for that. And uh, so the, the focus is really to optimize um, a, a solution that we have in France uh, based on OpenStack, and uh, that is completely uh, based on open source technologies. Mm. And uh, we see o open compute as an extension of that uh, philosophy, where uh, the, the, the open stack layers and the open source layers from the software point of view are allowing us to be very agile in general, or much better than before. And uh, hardware has to play a role in that. And uh, by first reducing the cost, it's important, but commodity hardware was bringing that sort of. So it's pretty similar. Um, but the open source aspect of, of hardware allows us to maybe tailor the hardware enough uh, to reduce more the cost and also uh, follow a little bit better the needs that we have uh, from the cloud market because the, the, the pace of the market is terrible. There is massive pressure from our competitors and there is massive pressure and load coming from our users and your new devices. So OCP is that enabler and uh, I think that's why Orange uh, it's really great, great. great. And, and Justin, you know, the, the, the Northeast financial service industry, um, how do you balance sort of the, the, maybe today the easy way to, you know, to consume a, a tier one um, versus the anti-vendor lock-in story that o OCP can tell? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if we look at it, you know, kind of a lot of the initial designs for OCP were really focused on web scale kind of, you know, traffic. And that's not necessarily indicative of the loads that kind of, you know, a lot of the, the fintech, you know, companies have. So there's a lot more stresses on different parts of the infrastructure that, you know, necessarily a Facebook, you know, wouldn't have. And so, and I also look, take a step back and you look at each individual one of kind of the fintech companies in the Northeast, you know, wouldn't necessarily have the scale of Facebook. We wouldn't really be able to get kind of the attention of all of the different vendors, but by kind of collaborating kind of, you know, in a kind of an open kind of mm. specifications and all of that, we really can say, hey, here are our use cases, here are our needs, and, you know, they can see, okay, look, you know, maybe across all of the kind of the fintech, you know, yeah, we probably are, you know, approaching the scale of kind of a Facebook from a kind of a volume perspective and really can kind of get their interest. Wow. So, um, so Jeremy, you had mentioned OpenStack, right? Mm -hmm. And you, we heard George Slesman yesterday talk about, uh, well, we saw a demo. It's a fantastic demo of George demoing uh, OpenStack on Open Compute provisioned from an iPhone. Um, how, important it is, how important is it for, for things like OpenStack and the, hey, we pay no license fees for what we're adopting? How important is that to Orange? I guess it is important to reduce that cost, that part of the cost. Uh, I don't believe that licensed software will disappear at Orange. It's 
not entirely anyway. Even the OpenStack way, there will be some support we will get from uh, specific players for uh, you know maybe enabling uh, having that pace of innovation uh, because Orange is learning at the same time as uh, the, the software are being developed at OpenStack. So we need help. We have to pay people to do that. It's fair, um, but uh, the the the, the the, the fact that it's open and the fact that the innovation is pretty massive in both uh, communities uh, yep. I is what's interesting for us. And uh, the, the we really believe, and I first want to thank the demo we've seen yesterday from George, because that's really what we are up to as well. And uh, seeing it yesterday from an iPhone was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> that was impressive. And, and uh, what I want to say is that Orange is really believing that the two communities should work together maybe more actively, and uh, what we think is that maybe the, the, the initial work that's being starting at OCP today on certification, compliance, and hardware management is the way to go to integrate OpenStack and having OpenStack being easily deployed on OCP, almost like a turnkey solution, without having to go to an IBM-like kind of solution, you know, which is completely integrated. So we do it the open source way, that's really Got what it. Great, and just while we're on the topic of OpenStack, I mean, I think you guys, Justin, is Bloomberg looking at OpenStack at all? Yeah, so, you know, um, you know, we are very big in kind of the OpenStack and, you know, having a lot of deployment. You know, we've open sourced all of our uh, kind of chef recipes to kind of build our OpenStack cluster. And so I think it, it kind of we look at the software side, well, it also makes sense to kind of participate in kind of open hardware as well. Yep. Yeah, you know, Graham, Graham Weston, uh, the, the chairman of Rackspace, um, I think described open compute and open stack as peanut butter and jelly. Do you guys, do you guys agree with that sort of uh, analogy? If you like peanut butter and jelly, yeah. <laughs> if you like peanut butter <laughs> and jelly, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe toast and jam. Um, so, uh, so you know, it's interesting. You've got sort of a, a services, you know, new services company, um, sort of an infrastructure as a service company, and then a, you know, sort of an experienced software, uh, you know, full-on game. Um, Ron, talk a little bit about um, you know Riot's workload and 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 how how you guys are testing that workload. I mean, uh, you guys you guys bleeding edge, right? In terms of installing Windows on this thing, um, talk to us about how how you came to um, to find that OCP was was a good platform for the for the software aspect of the of uh, open source ecosystems and and just workloads in general running on open compute. Yeah, so um, you know we're. we're Fortunate enough, the way our app works is uh, like a lot of games. You create instances, so maybe maybe a server will only have uh, have a dependency of, of four or eight hundred players, or you know who knows, right? Depending on the type of thing going on in the box. And so uh, you know, once you get through kind of the initial kind of beta testing you want to do with, with your own uh, internal capabilities, it's fairly easy to ease a box into production and then watch what it does. And, and even you know, we can direct the load so that we can overload the box a little bit um, and, and really see what happens when it's really stressed. And, and, uh, and, and so for our adoption curve, it was really play with it in the lab, then move one into production, let that run for a month or two, really understand it, move another one, move another one, then move a rack, right? And watch, and watch the rack and learn uh, the issues of the provisioning in the rack and, and if there's any maintenance type things. And then, and then roll through. And so um, <coughs> it... Uh, you know, it requires a little bravery. Um, you do risk a little bit with uh, your, your end customer, you know, players in our case. We'd hate, you know, you're in, you're in a game for 30 minutes and you've got 30 more minutes left, and if the server dies, it's a terrible experience. There's no restarting a, a competitive event like that. It's like turning lights out at the Super Bowl or something. And so um, it's, uh, you know, it, it, took a, it took some courage uh, to get it done, uh, but it, it's uh, been an awesome outcome so far. That's amazing. So you mentioned the rack, and I'd like to just go down, uh, you know, and have each of you answer a little bit about, uh, obviously, uh, the open rack. You know, Facebook's original vision for the open rack was this big 21-inch thing, and since then we've seen the financial services industry. We saw the open bridge rack. Uh, we've got a contribution from um, Servergy uh, coming up. Uh, uh, they've done a, a knife modification. Um, you've seen the, you know, the 10U rack um, that's available. It's, it's out in the, on, on the booth. So there's a number of uh, various open racks that you can now consume. If you wouldn't mind, you know, maybe you guys can, uh, all with different power zones, right? Ra the, the rack space uh, contribution has different power zone configuration, innovation zone than, than the typical open rack. Maybe you guys can talk a little bit about 
um, rack design and how that affected your decision into adopting OCP. Okay, can I start? <coughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um, so we started early in the process. So we have the in initial rack from Facebook, the non-open rack version. This is definitely something that would fit uh, our business uh, needs. So open rack was almost a savior to continue to push OCP at Orange. And uh, we are really interested in the design coming from Rackspace, if I'm um, not wrong, uh, that uh, Delta is providing, uh, which has only one power shelf in the middle. Um, because we didn't see the need in having multiple zones for our cloud services. Uh, we are in a multi-tenant system that has uh, already UPS in place in the data centers, uh, so we don't need batteries. Uh, and power-wise, Rackspace apparently had the same constraints, so they have to be a global company and, and be in colo. So uh, that design was really proper. And in, in open rack, we have the uh, possibility to rack anything now, so we have solutions from almost all the vendors in OCP, and uh, that because it's a test bed for us, so we use that as an evaluation uh, test bed, sort of. Got it. So um, kind of for, for Bloomberg, um, we are using kind of the uh, open rack design, and you know we are have a very heterogeneous kind of computing environment, probably one of everything that's ever been produced we have. Um, so, you know, we weren't necessarily as constrained into kind of the 19-inch rack and kind of, you know, really get the, you know, the efficiencies from going to the 21-inch. Um, it's something that, you know, we're, we're comfortable with. Um, probably the one thing that, you know, when we kind of brought our initial equipment in, it was all about we do not have kind of the 480 kind of power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is really, I think, one of the, the benefits of having the open computed. You know, we've kind of come here and, oh, hey, you know, rack space has kind of donated their kind of design, and I think kind of over time, you know, and, you know, Fidelity's done their convertible rack, and, you know, I, th I think you're going to see kind of the barriers for adoptions that kind of that we see and that we had to deal with slowly get addressed by contributions from the community. Great. Ron? Yeah, you know, for us, uh, it's interesting, the, um, one of the drags, I think, on Open Compute right now is actually these 20-year uh, CapEx investments that data centers have made. Yeah. You know, if you're not building your own data center, uh, you, you, you're kind of trapped in whatever the lo local area you need your data center in. And for us, locality matters sometimes because of latency. And the, um, and, you know, so we've been pushing uh, the data center community to, uh, as they build new data centers, to actually build something much closer to what Facebook has built and let us come in and do the rest um, so that we can have these really power efficient data centers and take advantage, full advantage, of uh, what Open Compute's bringing to the community. Uh, we've been fortunate to find a couple of those. Um, Fortune in Hillsborough, Oregon, ha has been a, a great partner that, that's really provided a lot of flexibility. Um, but even for them, uh, because they built a couple years ago, they still provide like UPS, right? Where Open Compute kind of solves that problem. And so we end up paying for something that we don't necessarily need and it creates some energy inefficiency uh, if we don't take advantage of it. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's a big growth area. Like there needs to be an open data center movement uh, <clears throat> as well um, that people need to get behind and, and encourage these guys. So. Awesome, o open data centers. So um, we'll, see what, we'll see what the project can do re regarding open data centers. Um, one of the benefits of open compute is obviously sort of the choose your own adventure path of, hey, I can be as involved as I want versus I can be as hands off as I want. Um, and Jeremy, you're very active on the mailing lists. Um, you know, I think all companies are represented uh, in the community pretty well. Um, you know, what would be, what would be each of your advice to the audience in terms of being able to adopt open compute? You know, obviously it's sort of a choose your own adventure story. Um, what's the biggest piece of advice you could give anybody in the audience considering adopting? We'll, we'll start. We'll start with Jeremy. Okay. <laughs> As Justin said, you know, you, we can reuse what the, the community is uh, delivering. You know, so Rackspace was really useful to us, you know, what they were committing. So I, I would say that if you want to adopt, rely on the community first. Don't, don't be afraid to join and uh, discuss with the people. Uh, think about Linux 20 years ago. People were being very scared, but just use it. Talk with who is actually developing it. That's one thing. And uh, as you said, you, you don't have to do everything yourself. So. If you want, you can, but you don't have to do everything yourself. Rely on the vendors, maybe, if you want to. The, the other point is, coming from the big company perspective, uh, I would say align everybody inside the company because it's a pretty disruptive topic. Uh, yep. It's not only about money, so sourcing has to be your friend, but uh, the data center guys have to be your friends, and that's uh, great. It's important. Uh, Justin. 
Yeah, so I mean, I, I think kind of my advice is, you know, be vocal, but, you know, you have to also understand that not every, you know, kind of use the example from Jay yesterday, you know, they were saying, you know, what, um, you know, Facebook has a school bus full of people working on that, and, you know, not every one of these companies is really going to be able to, you know, match that. So, you know, what it may very well be is focused on a particular area and say, okay, I'm going to go focus on stores, or I'm going to go focus on management, and hope and kind of, you know, trust that the community is going to get enough coverage and then kind of, the, you know, the rising tide will lift all boats. Great, and, and, and Ron? Yeah, so, you know, for us, uh, Riot's a very community-driven company, right? And uh, we trust that our community knows, knows what they want, and, and that has delivered incredible returns uh, for Riot. And um, being able to leverage a community with, with this core kind of infrastructure that's, that's critical to, you know, the technology that provides us entertainment experiences, they go hand in hand. Um, just makes sense, right? Like, like uh, aligning your business with those values throughout the entire chain uh, uh, seems like a no-brainer no approach. Um, and then, you know, the, the only other kind of key advice I can give is like, there's been some really incredibly uh, uh, historic internet figures on this stage over the last couple of days. Um, there's a reason they're here, and they're here because they understand uh, this movement and uh, and how transformational it's going to be over, over the coming years. Uh, uh, get on board, right? Like this is this is uh, this is going to be a big deal for your business. Right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, guys, this is a this is a movement. As Ron just said, you know, this is a it's a fantastic movement. If if your pain is your data center, we want to be your aspen. So uh, your aspen. So please uh, help me thank the the panelists, Jeremy, Ron, Justin. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. Well, that is uh, by far uh, my favorite part of all of this personally, is hearing how customers are using and benefiting from open compute. And so I thank, uh, thank our panelists for, for talking through that.